A beautiful Saturday afternoon in December in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, and we appreciate the fact you've broken away from some of your holiday shopping to help rock out the house here at the GCU Arena. Game three, this four-game home stand set to go off as your undefeated Lopes under Molly Miller, the first-year head coach, taking on the team going down Interstate 10 from Los Angeles to Phoenix to battle your Lopes today, the Lions of Loyola Marymount University. Good afternoon, everybody. Jim Howe welcoming you to another rocking place that is donning purple. purple. You've got GC Arena in front of you, and you've got exciting basketball for the next two hours. And as I welcome my partner in crime, Kyle Borg, to the microphones, you know, they were able to use that pressure defense that Molly Miller's been talking about all offseason and benefit themselves to a back and forth kind of transition game in the first win against Weber State. But Molly Miller also wanted a little bit of scrappiness. She certainly got that from Benedictine Mesa in the win earlier this week. So she's gotten a little bit of a cross section to prepare her kids. Absolutely, Jim, and Benedictine, not necessarily the team you would think would give you the scrappiness of play being the NAIA school down the road, but they came into the GC Arena, only lost by eight, and gave the Lopes a good early season fight. The Lopes took Molly Miller's style of play to a whole new level. They set the scoring record for points in a game and tied it for a quarter against Weber State. Well, last week on uh, Wednesday, Jim, they forced 28 turnovers, a new team high for this Lopes in the Division I era. And those are turnovers Molly Miller is used to seeing in the box score for her team. She's used to seeing it, and she doesn't say it as cocky. She just says, you know what? If we can get 28 turnovers every game, that's great. If we can get 30 turnovers every game, that's great. And they may have the chance here because Loyola Marymount is a scrappy team. They're a team that was able to get a big come from behind win. They turned a 10-point third quarter deficit on Thursday against UCI, Cal Irvine, into a 10-point victory, but they had to do it ugly. They had to turn turnovers into points, but they also had to avoid turnovers on their own. Absolutely, and this Loyola Marymount Lions team did a great job in that fourth quarter. They trailed for most of that game early on, Jim, but Kerry Clark able to lead the way with 19, and then CC Ellington with 18, and they're both in the top half of their teams for the scoring average, both averaging 15 and a half on the season, and both returning leading scorers from this from last year's Loyola Marymount team. And they are a team that right now is having to rely on a lot of their experience because they only had seven able bodies in the loss to begin the season against the University of Southern California. They had only eight players in uniform on the win at home against UCI on Thursday. They look like they've got more bodies that are warming up, but we'll see who actually hit the floor. And we're going to come back here at GCU Arena with the starting lineups and all the play-by-play. -play. It is the Lions, it is your Lopes. It is basketball at its finest right here on GCU TV. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetotheclause.com. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Jim Howe, Kyle Borg back here at GC Arena for this Saturday afternoon matinee. Each of these teams have played two games to begin the year. The Lopes with successful forays at home against Benedictine and against Weber State. And Loyola Marymount having one road game, a loss at USC, and then one home game, a win come from behind style against Cal Irvine. We're just about ready to go, so we're going to send it down to the floor and our PA announcer, A.C. Larkin. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful GCU Arena. And this afternoon, women's basketball matchup featuring the visiting Lions of Loyola Marymount University. And 
majoring in behavior health science here at GCU. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for another chance to be in this arena for today's game. We ask for your protection over the players, guidance for the coaches, and clarity for the officials out there on the floor. Let everything today be done for your glory, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. And now let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's matchup. We begin well, let's get to the starting lineups. First for the visiting Lions who come in one and one. They play their conference games in the West Coast Conference. And of course, they don't start that until the bottom of the month. They start off with a three guard alignment with Nicole Rodriguez running the point. Nicole is a five foot nine freshman from Eastvale, California. She's joined at the point. She can play point. She can play shooting guard. It is Sierra Cece Ellington, a five foot 10 sophomore from Portland, Oregon, rounding out the three guard alignment. Natalia Klimek is a five foot nine red shirt freshman from Kolesbreg, Poland. In the middle and two bigs in the middle to be sure. Kari Clark at one forward spot, a six foot two sophomore from Denver, Colorado, and then six foot four red shirt senior Megan Mandel out of Plymouth, Minnesota. to roll out the purple carpet for the starting five from Molly Miller's GCU Lopes who come in 2-0 overall and have a, still a month before they start whack play. They will start it off in the front court with Kennedy Shorts in her third year as a Lope, six foot one junior from Long Beach, California. She is joined up front by Katie Scott, a six foot two freshman coming off a 25 point performance in the win over Benedictine. She's a six foot two freshman from Carl Junction, Missouri at one guard spot. The three year starter at the point, Lada Piera out of Barcelona, Spain, a five foot nine junior. Joining her in the backcourt, Taylor Caldwell, the red shirt sophomore coming off a torn ACL and a missed year last year, but also coming off a career high in the season opener with 21 points. That win against Weber State, a five foot nine red shirt sophomore from Bakersfield, California. And rounding out the starting five, the grad student from Oakland, California, the one they call Nana, Nidasha Jackson, a five foot five guard who went to Piedmont High School during her high school days. The coaching staffs shake down like this. Charity Elliott is in her fourth head coaching stint on the D1 level, and she's in her ninth year for Loyola Marymount as the head coach. Her assistant coaches are Taja Edwards, Chris Elliott, and Emily Bun Jumbo, who spent four years playing for the Lions before she moved into the coaching staff. And for your lopes, Molly Miller, beginning the Molly Miller era a week and a half ago after an immensely successful stint as the six-year head coach at Drury University in her native Springfield, Missouri. Her assistant coaches, Emily Ragsdale, Buck Shield, and Karyla Middlebrook. So now we've got the stage set. Now it's time, Kyle, to make sure that this team gets off to a little better of a start. And we're going to talk about that a little later in the three plays to the game. But they've just got to calm down a little bit. Absolutely. Coach Miller talked to us about it yesterday when we had our meeting with her. And she hinted at, hinted at it after the Weber State win that the, this team's just got to calm down, get those jitters out, not be too pumped up and ready to go. And, has, and if they don't hit their first shot, not to worry about it, put it behind them and hit the next one. Well, maybe Kennedy Shorts was a little too pumped up and ready to go because they weren't quite up to speed on the first jump. So now Shorts and Megan Mandel from LMU will jump again. This one is tapped to the side, and it's saved by Lada Pieta. So the Lopes own the opening possession. Quickly in the corner for Caldwell, but her three-pointer is short. Long rebound comes out to Nicole Rodriguez. She wants to push it down the floor, but instead she bumps into Lada Pieta, 
loses possession. It trickles out of bounds. They last say it went off the leg of Pieta. This is something, Kyle, we didn't see a lot of in that win over UCI on Thursday night by LMU trying to get that transition going. And it's a little surprising even, you know, being only with seven players here on the active roster tonight. They're trying to go fast and maybe get themselves enough of a lead so late in the game when they're tired and the Lopes can keep subbing like they've been doing that they have enough of a lead to where it might not matter for the Lopes. Quick inbound out front. Klemek, open look for three. That's off the mark. Goes to the side, and Taylor Caldwell will let that one trickle out of bounds. Lopes in their home, white uniforms trimmed in purple and black, and LMU in their road powder blue uniforms trimmed in red and white. Lauda Pieta, who can dribble equally well with both hands, but she likes being a southpaw, gives it to Katie Scott. Thought about giving it up on one side, goes to the other side to give it off to Jackson. Trying to get it back out front for Scott, and Kari Clark, with that mask on and all, able to get a hand in the passing lane and knock it out. That's something that Clark has been doing very well. She's the leader on this team in block shots and also forced turnovers. So Shorts will inbound it just to the lope side of the midcourt line with 12 seconds left to get a shot off. Jackson and Pieta play catch out front. They swing it in the corner for Scott. Doesn't want the shot. Now they're trying to find who's open. Pieta draws the defense. Give it to Caldwell with one on the shot clock. That shot off the back of the iron. Shorts with the inside position, able to box out and get the carom for the rebound. So reset to 20 seconds on the clock. Here's Caldwell. Draw the defense, scoop it for Jackson. Jackson bumped, stopped the dribble at the top of the key. On the baseline, here's Shorts. Nice move inside. She'll spin, throws it up, and it looked like it was partially blocked, but no, they say she just lost the handle. And with two on the shot clock, that'll be the first Lopes turnover. Now the Lopes will be the ones to try and go into the pressure defense, as we've seen pretty much for all 40 minutes of both games. And there's the in-down spiel. Shorts able to get it, but can't get the shot. And then on the follow, Jackson comes down hard as she gets a piece of it. And that's going to be a loose ball foul. No, they say a held possession. It looked originally like they were going to call a foul on Kari Clark. But instead, it's a held ball, so the possession goes back to LMU. Clark looking to inbound. Better hurry, and finally able to get it in before the five-second call to Ellington. Ellington, lead pass for Mandel, and a beautiful play on the weak side. Mandel didn't even realize Pieta was running stride for stride with her. Lauda gets a piece of it, knocks it out. Yeah, that's either going to go down as a deflection or a blocked shot. I don't know. I give her a blocked shot on that one. Piera doesn't get a whole lot of those, but nonetheless, great defense from Laura Piera after almost getting beat deep. Especially when you're talking about a five foot nine point guard getting the chance to block a six foot four starting center. Here's Rodriguez, gets the inbound pass, puts it up to three, and gets it. And finally, the lid's off the basket, or lid's off the basket. It's three nothing LMU, 90 seconds in. Jackson will drive, scissor through the defenders. Nice shot off the glass. Right hander is good by Nana. Three to two, Lions quickly again trying to press the pace, and even with. Klemek going out, loses control of the basketball, and it's swatted away by Jackson. But the foul is going to be called on the reach-in on Nana Jackson. That'll be the first foul for either squad. So it'll be Klemek inbounding just to the right of GCU head coach Molly Miller in the Lopes bench. With 27 seconds on the shot clock, we've nearly played two minutes. Lob over the top, and that's right on the money. And there's an easy one for Ellington, who was posting up. 5 nothing. Was a nice look off the inbound pass, and no better way to put that pass other than for your own player to get it, and she put it in the perfect spot for Ellington. Caldwell saw daylight, but had it swatted away. Then Caldwell, as they're going back up the floor, able to come from behind, reach it. And being able to get the steal. Jackson, alone for three, misses everything. And now LMU wants to run again as Klemek races down the left side. Challenged by Caldwell. Bump, no harm, no foul. And the Lopes are able to back him out defensively. So Rodriguez will go into the half-court set. We played two and a half minutes. And the Lopes still on the uphill battle on the scoreboard. Klemek's pass. Jackson got a piece of it. She'll race down as Ellington was just going to let it go out of bounds on the back and over. And Ellington finally has to stop it so that Jackson doesn't have a chance for a breakaway layup. But nevertheless, it is a forced turnover by GCU as Carla Balagay will get the warm-ups off and check in. The 6'2 junior and like P. 
Pieta, a native of Barcelona in Spain, as Pieta gets the inbounds pass, and now the Lopes getting into their half-court set. They have not been able to find the range from outside, and now here's a pass stolen away by Rodriguez, intended for Piera. Gets it to the trailer, Clark, and there's the second block shot by Laura Piera. What a play. Here's Jackson to the trailer, Caldwell. Set up for three, bound around and dropped through. And boy, the Lopes can use that as a confidence builder from the outside, Kyle. And what a boost of confidence that was after great defense from Laura Piera and more great defense right there, forcing another turnover. Piera all by herself, it was a two on one and then to find the trailer, Taylor Caldwell who got the shooter's touch and the roll on the three to tie this one up. So the Lopes force another turnover, that draws the ire of nine year head coach Charity Elliott. But the Lopes will get it in their front court. Caldwell wanting Pieta to go outside. Instead gets it out front for Shorts. Shorts looks. She'll take that 15-footer, but it's too hard. Caldwell able to sneak in to get the offensive board, but can't get the follow to go. Here comes LMU with a two-on-two. -two. Rodriguez stutter step. Tries past Tiana Brown, who checked in. Throw, puts up the shot off the glass. It won't go. Wanted a foul. Didn't get it. Pieta quickly down on the transition on the lope side of the floor. Caldwell comes to get the basketball. Balagay trying to post up against Mandel. They can't get her the ball and Pieta wants to clear out the side. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Caldwell on the right side. Waits for a screen by Balagay. She'll fall away from 10. She'll get it from 10. Good news for TC. She's now two of three from the field and Caldwell with five of the seven points gives the Lopes their first lead. It's exactly what you want to see out of Taylor. Caldwell had a great opening game against Weber State. Struggled against Benedictine. Got into foul trouble early. Ended up fouling out of that game but right off the bat, two for three to start. Klimek with a hand in her face, puts up the three from long range, and it's an air ball that will go out of bounds. So the Lopes now starting to rattle the Lions after looking rattled the first 90 seconds of play. Lopes with a lineup of Tiana Brown, Carla Balagay, Taylor Caldwell, Kennedy Shorts, and the lady bringing up the basketball, Lada Pieta. Brown, the Eastern Arizona College alum, and one of two Brown sisters on this team, Tiara being the other one, Tiana, 5'9", junior from Spanaway, Washington. Shorts with the ball, out front for Lada Pieta, wants to back it out and spread the floor. Doesn't wait for a Balagay screen, instead draws the defense, give it out front for Carla, her three-pointer won't go. Rebound, tracked down in the corner, Pieta can't get a full hand on it. As Caldwell goes down, that'll be a turnover to send it the other way. The Lopes right now not being bashful, Kyle, even though they're not really able to find the range from out on the perimeter. When they get the open shots, Molly Miller says, take them. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing. They are taking every shot they can. Just three of 12 to start and one of four from deep so far. Here is Ellington. Ellington, drive on Caldwell, pushes off. Here is Rodriguez, she puts up a high arching shot, it goes in, it'll count, and she is fouled on the play. Rodriguez going down, just kind of threw that one up as a prayer, and it's answered, and she'll have the chance to give the Lions the lead back. So Rodriguez, aggressively weaving through traffic, able to draw the foul, that one called on, Nana, or on Carla Balagay. And the free throw swings the lead back to the Lions at 8-7. Here is Brown, left alone. Does she burn him? The three-pointer bound around won't go. Shorts battling for the rebound. Gets it, stop, and as she's going out of bounds, tried to save it, but Kari Clark held her ground, made the steal, and then she's fouled in the backcourt by Nana Jackson. That's not good news for Molly Miller. That's two personal fouls on the Lopes shooting guard, and Lada Pieta got a very quick breather on the side. She'll have to check back in. Ben Lovatis also checking in for the first time this afternoon. The 5'11 junior out of Vanta, Finland for the first two years. We would have called her a three-point sharpshooter, but she has added a whole lot of dimensions to her game, and her defense has really stepped up. Yeah, still yet to hit a three-pointer is Venla this season. Had 12 points against Benedictine, and she has been looking 
really strong offensively, adding that uh, mid-range jumper and a couple of layups to her arsenal, and then her defense has vastly improved. Clark can't get the shot to go, but Mandel, all of six foot four, able to follow and score, and LMU has run off five straight as we pass the midpoint of this first quarter to lead 10-7. Pieta will fire from three. That one won't go, and the lope's still cold, and on the rebound scramble, Klimek battling with two different lopes, and it's the pushing foul will send it the other way. And that will be a timeout on the floor, so we will step aside with 4.34 left to go. Here in quarter number one, it's Loyola Marymount 10, GCU 7 on GCU TV. growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. Back here at GC Arena, time to take a look at the three keys to the game brought to you by Sanderson Ford. Kyle? First key to tonight's game, Jim, is going to be the numbers game. The Lopes have a few more players on the active roster than the seven for Loyola Marymount, so we'll see how that factors in with the substitutions as this game goes on with the helter-skelter, full-court press style of play that Molly Miller likes to play. The second one is go, go, go. Get out and run is the game plan for the Lopes. Try and run them into the ground and get as many turnovers and easy baskets as you can. And then third and finally, avoid the hype. We talked about it a little bit at the beginning right before tip-off is just get those pregame jitters out of the way. Don't be too amped up and ready to go, but be ready to go. And if that first shot didn't fall, we saw for Taylor Caldwell, didn't go in. Lopes went a little cold for about the first 90 seconds. Caldwell hit that three and got them going, and they're just down by three now. Now we need to see if that can get contagious. Nobody else has been able to hit an outside shot. Lopes with the ball in their front court. Here's Balagay on the drive. There's a nice high percentage shot. Balagay, if at first you don't succeed from outside, try, try again from the inside. That hook shot makes it a one-point Lions lead, and that help defense by Vadas puts Rodriguez, Vadas, and Pieta on the floor. The possession arrow this time favors the Lions, so it will stay on this side. And just when you think that you've made it across half court and you break the press, here comes the trail person to come in and trap you from the other side. And it saw right there where they almost forced another turnover. Rodriguez has it knocked away. Beautiful play by Taylor Caldwell. Here come the Lopes three on two. Gets it off for Vadas and a beautiful play by Venla. The pass was behind her, but still able to make up the ground and get the shot in to give the Lopes the lead back 11-10. Here is Natalia Klimek covered by Vadas way out on the perimeter. Comes around to Clark's screen. Now Clark being covered by Vadas in a switch. They get it to her. Rodriguez comes out to get the ball. Tried for a shimmy shake. Knocks down Pieta. No harm, no foul. Ten on the shot clock. Open look. Klimek and another three-point air ball off the hands of Klimek. We've seen a couple of air balls from deep for the Lions here to start this first quarter. And then you saw Coach Miller over there high-fiving Laura Piera. She did take that charge, that off. Uh, arm extended. Referees didn't call it, however, so we'll see if that factors in here in a little bit if the referees start to call that a little bit more. First time Charity Elliott goes to her shorthanded bench as Haley Herdman checks in for the Lions for the first time. Lopes with the ball, trying to build on a one-point lead. Vadas in the corner for three! And that will be the way that the Lopes will able to get that lid off the basket. Vadas, as you said, Kyle, her first three-pointer, not just of the game, but of 2021. And now outside, Taylor Caldwell called for a reach-in foul, and that will put the Lopes over the team foul limit. They are starting to set up, but I do believe it says five team fouls. If that's the case, yep, now they catch it, and they will head down to the Lopes free throw line. Yeah, and you know what? That's Venla's only her third attempt 
of the season from deep. As you saw her when she first checked into the game against that zone, she was standing on the box in that short corner area waiting to get a couple of touch passes, but it's nice to see her not scared to continue to pull the trigger from deep. We'll see if that gets her outside game going a little bit more. Rodriguez is the only one from either side that has gone to the line so far in this first quarter. And she's now two or two, two for two as that one hits on the front of the iron and drops through. She'll try to make this a two-point game with 317 and a fast-moving first quarter. And she does. And already Rodriguez has eight of the 12 points on the Lions ledger. Pieta for Vadas. Now Katie Scott back in the lineup. She gets the ball way out high. Here's Pieta, covered by Clark in a switch. Stop the dribble. They haven't been able to get Scott involved in the offense yet. Tiana Brown faked the pass, draw the defense, kick in the corner, same spot, but Vadas' three this time won't go, and it's Ellington able to scramble to get the rebound, then tries to throw it off the leg of Scott, and they say no deal, that she tried to throw it off of her, but it instead hit the out-of-bounds line first, so credit Scott and Vadas with another defensive gem. Yeah, that's six foot two and six foot two with their hands straight up on a guard in the corner on the sideline. There was no way she was going to get that pass over top without a tip, and you saw her, she just threw it away. Well, Herdman was in for all of two plays. The five foot eight junior from Manhattan Beach, California, checks out for the Lions as Tiana Brown has to go over the top to get the inbounds pass in for Pieta. Pieta drive, puts it up. That one's blocked, but she gets it back. Gets it back out front to Balagay. Baseball pass cross court for Brown, no reset on the shot clock. They still have 15 seconds to get it up. Scott, fake the three, gets around Mandel, all the way to the hoop, score it, count it, foul, send her to the free throw line. Scott knew exactly what she wanted to do and got Mandel up in the air. And that's what you have to respect about Katie Scott is she has the range from deep, more of a stretch four for the Lopes. She can shoot it. She also played a little bit of guard in high school, so you know she's got that range, and you saw the fake on the first shot attempt from Scott and then able to drive it in and put it home. Beautifully done by the Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year. That's the only that's only the second foul on the Lions, but they are both owned by Natalia Klimek as Scott is able to convert the three-point play. Lopes have their largest lead at the two and a half minute mark. Here's Rodriguez on the right side as the Lions able to break the press. Clark gets it off the other side. Now an open look for three, but the Lions are just as cold as the Lopes are from behind the arc, and the Lopes are able to get the long rebound. Here's Scott. She'll pull up from 15. That one off the mark. Vadas keeping the rebound alive, but it comes down to the lap of CeCe Ellington. Ellington driving on Pieta. Goes all the way in. Scoops it for Mandel. Has it knocked away. Saved out front by Herdman. And Rodriguez is now going to spread the floor as we're under two minutes left to go in quarter number one. Rodriguez double team. Low block Clark. Bumps in two. Vadas puts it up and in. No harm, no foul. They are definitely letting these two teams play. 17-14, Lopes with the lead in the basketball. Vadas out front. Zone defense employed for the moment by LMU. Pieta looks at the three, steps around the defender, puts it up from 12, won't go. Pieta's been dead on from that short range jumper the first two games, but has not been able to find the range in her first three shot attempts of the afternoon. Ellington inching in on Tiana Brown. Comes around a double screen. Springs free, open look, 12-footer got it. Design play worked to perfection by the Lions. So Pieta takes a glance at her head coach before she heads to the opposite side of the floor and getting the play. Pieta, left side for Brown, baseline Scott. Scott, nice pass over the top for Balagay. Has it partially blocked, gets it back, follows and scores. Good workman-like demeanor by Balagay to get that one up and in. Rodriguez surveying as she tries to weave through the defense and does. Scissors through two defenders, draws the defense, gets it from Mandel. Can't get the first shot to go. Almost loses it out of bounds. Goes to the floor to save it. 16 on the shot clock. Half a minute left to go in the first quarter. Ellington screaming out instructions as she tries to reset it in the half court. Another screen. Now kicks in the corner. Open look. Rodriguez three. No. 18 seconds left to go. Scott with a rebound. She'll get it in the front court. They can go for the last shot if they want it but Vadas doesn't want it. She wants the shot now for three. 
Eight seconds left, six point GCU lead. Ellington seeing the clock, now three, now two. Gets it inside, all alone is Kari Clark, and she will put it in for the buzzer. And Ellington, even though she's a sophomore, definitely with the presence of mind to draw the defense, knowing the clock still had time, and Clark gets into the scoring column. An entertaining first 10 minutes of basketball, and we will come back with quarter number two. Here at GCU Arena, here's your first quarter score. The Grand Canyon University Lopes 22, the Loyola Marymount University Lions 18. Keep it here for more coverage of women's basketball on GCU TV. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> Get the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU, from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GCUTV20 today only to get 20% off for being a GCU TV viewer. That's GCU TV 20, and you can log on and get your gear today. Lopes start the second quarter with the basketball. Tiana Brown to Kennedy Shorts, who's back in there after about a three minute break. Here's Caldwell as she backs out, throws it for Brown. Fake the three, drive around the defender, trying to get it for Shorts. Kennedy wasn't expecting the pass and it's stolen away. Stolen right back by Brown, she'll pump up a three. Not exactly the way they drew it up, Kyle, but it works to perfection anyway. Now the pass almost thrown away. Vadas went for the steal. Ellington gets it. She'll drive all the way in. Put it up with the left hand. No. Shorts made her change the shot. Mandel then tries to throw it back out and instead throws it off the bottom of the backboard. That will be an out-of-bounds violation. Kennedy Shorts doing it on both sides of the floor. And Tiana Brown with some pesky defense in the backcourt. And suddenly the Lopes are trying to build on a touchdown lead. Taylor Caldwell stopped the dribble out front, bothered by Haley Herdman, gets rid of it for Tiana Brown. Three guard alignment right now is Brown, Caldwell, and Pieta with Shorts and Vadas in the middle. Caldwell with 10 on the shot clock resets. Shorts waiting to set a screen. She goes around it. Now five, now four. Here's Vadas. Straight away for three. No. Shorts, good position. Gets the offensive board. Follows and scores. Kennedy Shorts able to get into the scoring column. And the Lopes are out firing to start this second quarter. You know, that 1-3-1 one, one defense, they switched from that 2-3 zone to the 1-3-1. One, one. And the 1-3-1, one, one, they haven't really been able to rebound the basketball defensively very well. And you've seen the Lopes and Kennedy Shorts just right there. A beautiful offensive rebound, one dribble and a put back. Open look in the corner, but the three-pointer is off the mark. Kari Clark has it, but then when she tried to bring it out, Vadas able to knock it down. They both go down, and the foul is going to be called on Venla. That's her first personal. That'll be a non-shooting foul, and Molly Miller not happy with that call from referee Johnny Mendez and voices her displeasure. Yeah, I'd get an explanation on that one, too, if I'm Coach Miller. It looked, it was pretty close. I think that was good defense from Varis right there, but she'll pick up her first foul, but not in foul trouble just yet for her, leading the way with eight points right now for the Lopes. Rodriguez, quick lob in for Clark, put it up and put it in, make that CC Ellington, and Ellington on a design play. They have been doing a good job of getting her involved in the offense and her involving her teammates. 27-20, Lopes with the lead. Here's Vadas in the corner. They stay out on the perimeter for the moment, and then when Pieta tries to drive around Kari Clark, she saw the switch defensively and took advantage of it. Kari at six foot three just can't stay with the quick point guard and she'll pick up her first personal foul. Non-shooting foul, so Caldwell will inbound it out on the side as we stare down from her from our perch atop 
FGCU Arena. Caldwell around his screen, stop, open look, 15-footer, in and out, stays out. Mandel and Vadas. that's been a battle all through this game, and that'll be another battle. Mandel on the floor, possession arrow, favors LMU on the held ball. Katie Scott checks in, Nana Jackson will check out. So the Lopes wanting to go bigger. And they have four of their five starters on the floor along with Vin Lavaris. And Scott comes over to pressure the inbounds pass. Clark looking, waiting, gets it in. Klimek able to play keep away from Vadas. Now she races down, double team, sees the double team, able to save it, but almost threw it away again. Now the Lopes have to reset defensively. Ellington with an open look, and she's called for traveling. Again, Kyle. Contact does not seem to be a problem for this three-person refereeing crew. Not at all, and I think that benefits the Lopes in the long run, the contact being the style of play that they like to play. And you saw Katie Scott, she tried to step over, and now an illegal screen as she got a little bump and couldn't help herself but stick her hip out. Well, and that's also one of those that you can't necessarily completely fault Katie for that, that Katie was thinking about setting a screen, and Taylor, I think, jumped the gun a little bit before yes. Katie was able to get set. Just a little bit, and I thought they were going to call a block down here on Katie Scott on that last possession that ended in a travel as she stepped up to take the charge as the travel was caused because she uh, got clipped. She clipped Katie Scott on the way through. So Scott now joins Jackson at the two-foul plateau, and both of them on Molly Miller's bench for the moment. Lions with the ball. Ellington starting to get more involved offensively, but can't get any room off Pieta. Has to get rid of it to Rodriguez cross court. Working, now double team. Caldwell with the sticky hands. Goes down to knock it out of bounds. Eight seconds on the Lions shot clock, but Caldwell so far has been up to the challenge defensively against Rodriguez. Absolutely, and they had a battle in the first quarter. Both players had five of the first team seven. So Rodriguez and Caldwell are going to be a battle to watch all night long. Rodriguez throws it out for Klimek. Klimek, will she take the three? She's not been able to draw iron on two of her first attempts. That one, as she tried to drive, had it knocked away by Pieta, but Pieta apparently stepped on the out-of-bounds line as she tried to save it to her teammates. The shot clock is reset, but Right now, this three-person crew of Brenda Pantoya, Teresa Turner, and Johnny Mendez trying to see whether or not that was actually a change of possession. If not, this may go to the Lopes because that 30-second clock would have probably expired. And I'm not sure that you can call a change of possession as I'm diving out of bounds. I'm not sure that that's how change of possession works exactly. So we'll see what they come up with. But you saw Coach Elliott for the Lions getting ready to call a timeout also. And apparently the they're going to go they're going to go to the replay. They want to make sure of this. So they're going to send both benches both teams to their respective benches with 707 left. And I think also Brett, Teresa Turner is letting Charity Elliott know the Lions head coach they're also trying to see where it actually was deflected. So again, 7.07 left. Remember, this is game three of this season opening four-game homestand. The Lopes are back here on Wednesday night as they'll take on the Lumberjacks, who will make the trip down I-17 from Northern Arizona University to GCU. That'll be a 6 p.m. start, and we'll have the pregame show starting at 5.55. Also want to point out that for those that were expecting the day-night doubleheader, there is no Lopes men's game tonight, originally scheduled against Prairie View A&M, but Prairie View A&M is in COVID protocol, so didn't make the trip. Lopes unable to find a replacement, so therefore this is the game of the day. And that's just the unfortunate uh, scheduling problems that you get with this pandemic is you, uh, you scramble to find a new opponent, and if you can't find anybody and you're not willing to travel too far, it gets a little tough to find a replacement game on just a few days' notice, really. I think there was a lot of people that when they saw that people like Grambling State and Prairie View A&M were able to make that kind of cross-country trip, I think there were some people that were wondering, are they really going to be able to do it when push comes to shove because of COVID and because of what everybody is referring to as the new normal? It looks like LMU is going to get the basketball and also get a fresh shot clock. So Rodriguez will inbound it to the right of her own bucket. Looking, waiting. They're not covering the inbounds pass. They instead get it to Ellington. Being covered by Caldwell, and she wants to back it out and spread the floor. They've got time to use. LMU trailing by seven points. 
Ellington stopped the dribble. Having to come out to get it is Rodriguez. Rodriguez wants to work on Pieta. Tries to spin, and there's Caldwell. Beautiful anticipation to make the steal, and that weak side help has been a gem several times for the Lopes defense. Caldwell and Pieta combining for the steal. Pieta now has it knocked away, gets it back from Rodriguez. In the corner, Vadas lob inside shorts. Move to the right, put it up. Oh, hung on the front of the rim and fell off. Tough break for the Long Beach, California native. Clark will bring it out of backcourt herself, almost travel. Here's Klimek, the trailer. She'll back it out as the Lopes get set defensively. Sticky man-to-man defense employed by the Lopes. Lob in for Clark, shorts adjust, but Clark's still able to muscle her way underneath, and the reverse layup goes. The foul is on Kennedy's shorts. Bottom line, that was great defense, Kyle. Just a great play by Kari Clark. Absolutely, and it, I guess Kennedy Shorts wasn't as straight up as the referees would have liked on that one. She played solid defense as Clark was trying to go reverse, and she ended up hitting it. So that's just the first foul for Kennedy Shorts. So no harm, no foul for her so far here in the second quarter. Three-point play attempt, not good, but the long rebound goes to Mandel, so the Lions get a fresh shot clock. Ellington will reset it. Still 11 seconds to get a shot off. Now Ellington springs free, 15-footer. That's a little bit short. And this time it's the point guard, Lada Pieta, crashing the boards to get the Lopes defensive rebound. Pieta comes down the right side for Vadas. Nearing the midpoint of this second quarter. Had a much more methodical pace to this one than we had in the first 10 minutes. Caldwell around a Balagay screen. Gives it back to her on the pick and roll. Back to TC from the elbow. Perfect. Taylor Caldwell seems to be the most consistent one from outside. She's got three field goals and seven points. Long pass. Ellington has to retrieve it on the baseline. Throws it back out front for Clark. That defense in the backcourt is obviously bothering the Lions at the moment. Rodriguez now has it knocked off her knee. Pieta fighting through the screen, and they will call a foul on the Lopes point guard. Lada Pieta, that's her first. And the Lions right now visibly frustrated on the face. I just saw it on the face of Natalia Klemek. Visibly frustrated. She didn't get that ball on that swing pass. She had a shot. She was open. And I think the Lopes are starting to get to the Lions just a little bit. Well, and even on the end of that play, then Rodriguez, when she was trying to get set, Pieta was walking with her, and Rodriguez just gave her a little bit of shove. So you're right, Kyle. They are starting to get under the skin. But that time, over the top instead of under the skin. Nice lob for Ellington, and Ellington will put it up and in. And that's the second time they've been able to connect on that pass so far in this first half. 29-24, Lopes maintaining a two-possession lead. Caldwell to Brown, open look for three! Second time that Tiana has been able to find the range from behind the arc, and the Lopes now have five three-pointers in this first half. Klimek all the way in, high off the glass and in. First scoring of the afternoon for the Poland native. On the other end, shot doesn't go, and then it's Tavia Rowell who just checked in and Tiana Brown battling for the rebound, but unfortunately wearing the same jersey, and they lose it out of bounds off of each other. Timeout on the floor, 442 left to go in this first half. It's Grand Canyon 32, Loyola Marymount 26. Keep it here for more Lopes women's basketball on GCU-TV. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assistance. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. GCU fans, if you haven't already, it's time to download the Lope Nation app. 
Watch GCU home sporting events directly from your app. Receive personalized news and score updates from your favorite Lopes teams. Follow the Lopes closer than ever with scores, schedules, stories, and more. And even more perks will be coming very soon. Search GCU Athletics in your phone's app store or download the GCU Athletics app now at gculopes.com slash app. Well, Kyle, the Lopes have led for most of the last eight minutes of play, despite the fact they're not shooting the ball very well. They're only shooting 39% from the field, but they've gotten 11 more shot attempts up than LMU, and they're also five for 12 from three-point range. Well, the three-pointers are really helping out the Lopes as they've finally been able to turn that on just a little bit, but you look at the two shooting percentages, 47 for the Lions, 39 for the Lopes. You think this score would be flipped if it wasn't for the threes and the nine forced turnovers that the Lopes have been able to force so far. So once again, the Lopes in press mode. Kiara Clark able to get it in for Natalia Klimek, covered by Nana Jackson, and Jackson's got to be careful. She's got those two personal fouls. Klimek thinking about going coast to coast, but now she's double teamed, has to throw it out front. Rodriguez alone for a moment, decides not to take the shot, instead starts the dribble going. 4.25 left to go before the half. Lions with 10 seconds to get a shot up as Ellington wants the side cleared out. Now six, now five. Working on Raul, backs away, 15-footer. That one's short, right down to the lap of Kennedy Shorts. Here's Caldwell along with Brown, Shorts, Tavia Raul, and Nana Jackson. Caldwell drive in, kick in the corner for Jackson. Crash is in to Natalia Klimek, who anticipated well, took the charge. Personal foul number three on Nydasia Jackson. And you know what? We've seen in the first two games, the Lopes not being able to stay out of foul trouble. You saw it in the first one with Katie Scott, then the second game with Taylor Caldwell, and now Nana Jackson and all three of those players in each game had a lower scoring game, but nonetheless are still big keys for the Lopes. Got to give Molly Miller credit, too. She's done a good job of juggling those in foul trouble. Inside pass, Arendt knocked away by Vadas, but it somehow goes right to Kari Clark, who drives in and scores, and Clark starting to get more involved in the Lions' offense. She now has three field goals and six points, and that nine-point lead about two minutes ago has been cut by more than half at 32-28. Brown trying to change that for three. That one in and out. Boxing out is Megan Mandel, the six-foot-four starting center for LMU. Brings down the rebound, and here come the Lions trying to make this a one-possession game. Lob for Ellington. Errant, she gets it back in the corner. Tavia Rowell right in her face. Ellington wants to work one-on-one -on, -one on her. Waits for a Clark screen, but before that, kind of a ticky-tack foul called on Rowell. Kyle, we've been talking about how aggressive the two teams have been contact-wise, but the last couple of calls have been really just touch fouls. Yeah, and that's the hand check up top. You saw uh, Tavia Rao kind of try and turn her around a little bit to keep her in front. And I mean, that foul 40 plus feet from the basket, not a good foul to take, but also one for the referees that is, you know, not always called the same throughout the game. Lopes are now over the team foul limit, so Ellington, the southpaw, goes to the line for a pair. And the first one's good, the second one not good. Here come the Lopes now with a lead of three. Caldwell working one-on-one, -on -one, drives around Rodriguez, but the shot won't go. Mandel with a rebound, tried to outlet it. It was shoved back in her face, gets it back, throws it out. Ellington had it, and then good hands by Vadas. Raul trying to save it from going out of bounds, can't do it. Nice play, though, because Ellington had an easy lay-in if she's able to get around Venla. Vadas with the sticky hands. So now it's Rodriguez who will inbound right in front of the Lopes bench. And Ellington, I don't think she's very happy about the fact that she's leaving the game. She's been much more involved in the offense. And that's actually a benefit for the Lopes because that Rowell versus Ellington matchup had not been working very well for GCU. Clark again the drive. That one rim around won't go. Shorts has the rebound as the Lopes dodge a bullet. Lead pass for Rowell. Rowell. Stutter step off for Caldwell. Easy going to get it for three. Taylor Caldwell looking very relaxed. She's now in double figures with 10 points, and the lead's back out to six. Klimek drives around, crashes into Vadas. No harm, no foul. Klimek can't believe it, loses the basketball. She's talking to Johnny Mendez, the official, as she goes back down, but she's trailing the play. Now Brown has it blocked underneath a beautiful play by Megan Mandel and both teams with defensive gems. 
Here's Klimak. Now she has an open look, and she'll take advantage of it as she buries the three-point jumper from the right arc. So rough and ragged the last minute or so, and as we near the two-minute mark, the Lopes hanging on to a three-point edge. Brown out front. Waits for Shorts to come get it, but Clark is able to swat it away. Comes down all the way to the opposite end of the floor, goes out of bounds, and it was last touched by Tiana Brown. And even though Kari Clark is all of six foot two and a stocky six foot two, she's showing the good hands and also the good speed down the floor, Kyle. She absolutely is, and that was going to be a foot race, and I'm not sure either player on that one knew who touched it last because they both kind of stared at each other and watched it go out of bounds and made the referee make a call. And the Lopes have been playing the majority of the second quarter, it seems like, without Laura Piera on the floor, and they're playing pretty well, and Piera is the one that really makes them go and sets up the offense and gets open shots for this team. So the Lopes without Laura Piera still playing pretty well. Klimek now working on Kennedy Shorts, keeps driving all the way through the lane. Off for Rodriguez, bumped by Caldwell, backs away, still 15 to get a shot off for LMU. Rodriguez working one-on-one, -on -one, then puts up an off-balance jumper, won't go. Mandel underneath, tried to put it up, blocked by Shorts from behind, but they say that Kennedy got the body, and that will cost Shorts her second personal and send Mandel to the free throw line. Yeah, Kennedy Shorts caught with her hand in the cookie jar on that rebound, trying to come from behind and get that block. And you saw good play from Mandel to just go straight up with it and draw that second foul on Kennedy Shorts. And now LMU able to cut this lead down to two, possibly one with a minute 30 remaining here in the first half. Charity Elliott so far has only used six players, but they have hung around. And now Mandel can make it a one-point game, but that one won't go, so it's 35-33. Lopes could use a little mini rally in the final 85 seconds to get some space going into the locker room. Shorts at the free throw line. Drive. Beautiful pass inside, but Balagay's shot is blocked from behind by Klimek. Natalia thought she got all ball, but referee Johnny Mendez disagrees. That'll be personal foul number three on Natalia. And you saw Coach Elliott trying to keep her player away from the referee on that one as she was unhappy with that call. So Balagay will head to the free throw line for the first time on the afternoon. Carla's first free throw is not good. Lopes have been pretty consistent from the free throw line on the season. They sh are shooting 73% as a team. That one not good. Rebound poked around Shorts with a beauty. Then gets it inside to the driving Caldwell. That one won't go. Back tap comes out front, and Haley Herdman's got it. The Lions dodging bullets all over the place, and they have the ball trailing by two. The lob for Mandel too much by Sierra Ellington, and CeCe will get the turnover to give it back to Grand Canyon with 63 seconds left. Now here come Piera and Scott to close out this final minute and hopefully give the Lopes a little bit more cushion going into the half on the scoreboard. Scott playing with two personal fouls, as is Kennedy Shorts, but Kennedy checks out. Check that. Kennedy will inbound along with Caldwell, then Lovatis, Lauda Piera, and Katie Scott. Lopes have led by as many as nine, and they've led this entire second quarter. Now Caldwell almost fumbles it away. Gets it back, and here's Pieta and Shorts out front. Left side, Caldwell. Trapping zone defense employed by LMU. Caldwell, alone, three-pointer, no. Rebound, out of bounds. Rodriguez and Vadas battling for it, and the Lopes will get it back, and a fresh 20 on the shot clock. So Katie Scott will inbound it to the right of her own basket. Mandel will cover and pressure it. Here's Pieta back in for Scott. Scott moving to the hoop, and Mandel able to force the travel. Again, a lot of contact, but I think the referees thought that was equal parts contact. Yeah, just that's a good defensive uh, play on Katie Scott for the Lions that time as Katie Scott was trying to move her way inside, but took the contact, thought she was going to get a whistle and ended up traveling with the basketball. Katie's only gotten two field goal attempts up in this half after that 25-point performance in the win earlier this week over Ben U. So still a two-point game. About a dozen seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Rodriguez and Ellington playing catch out front. 
Now Rodriguez sets a screen for CeCe. Ellington moving in on Caldwell. Stop, double team, triple team. Gets rid of it for Herdman. Out to Mandel, but wait a minute. They're going to call an offensive foul on CeCe Ellington. She was triple teamed. They said she pushed off to get space. Kyle, I'm not sure I saw that. I definitely didn't see it up here, but the Lopes will take it and will be able to hold if they want for the last shot with 21.8 left and up by two. Shot clock is off. Pieta comes around a Vada's screen. Now throws it back for Venla. Dangerous pass. She gets it back. Give it to Caldwell in the corner. Three-pointer won't go. Still nine seconds to go, but Ellington has it taken away from her in the backcourt. Beauty of a play by Katie Scott. Three seconds, two seconds. Scott from 15 rolls off the iron at the buzzer. So the Lopes scratching and clawing. They score just eight points in that final five and a half minutes. And a nine point lead is reduced to two. Good 20 minutes of basketball and both teams have good things and things to work on as they go into that halftime locker room, Kyle. Well, absolutely. And we said it at the end of the first quarter going into the second is the shooting percentages. You would think the score would be flipped and the Lopes forcing 13 turnovers in that first half and only have a two point lead here as LMU has been able to hang around. But the Lopes have been playing really well defensively for the most part and their press has really caused the Lions some trouble. Well, hope you'll stick around for our halftime show. It is on the other side of this break. We are going to talk to none other than first-year head coach and two-time defending NCAA Division II Coach of the Year, Molly Miller. Again, that's on the other side of this break as we have reached the halftime break here at GCU Arena on this Saturday afternoon in Phoenix. Here's your score. The GCU Lopes 35, the Loyola Marymount Lions 33 right here on GCU TV. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back to GCU Arena. It is halftime between your Lopes and the Lions of Loyola Marymount University. It's time to kind of go to the other side of the head coach. Molly Miller joins us. Thank you so much for taking the time. Molly, I kind of want to go back to March. You are the head coach at Drury University in your hometown of Springfield, Missouri. You have won 32 straight games before everything gets shut down. You won 67 out of 68. You and your husband had just had a baby a couple of months before. The basketball world is your proverbial oyster, so to speak. And the phone rings. Tell me about why all of a sudden the thought of leaving your hometown, leaving your family and all of that, and coming to Phoenix to coach GCU was so attractive. Well, it was a different type of March madness for me, that's for sure. Um, kind of the heartbreak of season being over, and that was such a special team. I mean, we had a shot of winning it all. Um, we were really, really close, tight-knit group. Chemistry was great. So you had a, a major blow to my career right there. Um, and I felt, especially for our seniors, you know, in that moment, and you just couldn't shake that feeling. Um, so then we're all kind of at home, um, you know, locked up, if you will, from, from COVID. And then, um, you know, Cy being born, he was about two, three months at that, that point. And so we kind of focused all our attention on our kids. And I guess that was kind of our sanctuary at that point, our relief, just spending time with them because Cy was dragged two years old to a basketball game. So <laughs> we were able to kind of step back and just focus on our family for a while. Um, and then the opportunity to kind of hear out GCU and, and 
understand kind of what they were doing and their vision. And, you know, I've always said I, I never really wanted to make the jump just because um, the grass isn't always greener. I knew I had a phenomenal situation at Drury. I got to recruit the type of kids that I wanted to recruit to build a program with top-notch people um, to kind of influence that culture. And the more I educated myself on GCU, the lights went on. I was like, oh, I could, I, could, I could recruit the type of kids I want here, the resources that they're giving their basketball programs, their athletic programs, are ones that you can win here. Um, you know, really aligned with, with my faith and my standards. And I think for me to recruit the type of kids that want to be at a place that they can not only succeed on the basketball court, but also learn these life lessons. I've always said kind of basketball is kind of a roadmap for life and um, we are in this together and, and that's something that I felt very strongly. It was kind of a feeling that came over me like I can I can do something here that I really want to do and this was stepping out of my comfort zone. Oh, Let me boy. tell you, I was uh, born and raised Springfield native, coaching at my alma mater, you know, everyone's really in my corner, having, having a lot of success. but. Um, you know, through lots of prayer and discussion with my family, here I am. Um, what a great situation I found myself in with the support here, and I'm really enjoying what I'm doing right now. It's obviously you're a great addition to the GCU family, but what was the hardest part about leaving the Drury family? Um, you know, they watched me since I was about yay big, grow up, and I played there, I went to camps there. Then I was an assistant coach there. Then I started my head coaching career there. So it all really came full circle at Drury. So stepping out of that circle was a little bit uncomfortable for me, but um, the support I felt from them, that's, that's how you know they're true family, you know, and, and they're, they're true, just basketball brought us together, but we're bonded more than that. So the fact that I get phone calls and texts after games here at GCU or emails, how do I catch the game? you know that's the real deal. And so their support really helped me because um, it was a struggle for me, you know, telling that news. And it was a hard time. I, I couldn't have those face-to-face -face conversations that we would normally enjoy in a pandemic. So, you know, I had to, I had to kind of tell them through a phone call or a text message or a Zoom call or an email. And so um, there was a lot of people near and dear to my heart that, you know, you had to break that news to. But then when they supported me, that, that meant everything. And I'm like, they're true. They're family forever then. So what's been the greatest part about residing in Phoenix, getting settled, and being a part of not just the GCU family, but Phoenix as a whole? The challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I thrive off of that. Um, I'm a competitor. I want to compete. I want to challenge myself. I always want to get better every day. So taking over a brand new program in a pandemic somewhere I've never been in the country is a challenge. And <laughs> I've, I really love that. Um, I've loved kind of getting to know the kids, um, getting to know the administration. Our coaches are from the Midwest too, so this is a whole new world for us. Um, we're really finding ourselves just exploring and growing together and building relationships, new ones here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. So I've really enjoyed kind of the challenge of it all. And not only that, but seeing, it's almost more gratifying when the expectations, you know, you, when you have that big target on your back, number one in the nation for about six years, the past six years, <laughs> Um, you find the joys in winning, but it might be a little bit tougher, you know, because it's expected and, and that's what you're supposed to come out and do every day. Now we want to exceed expectations. Um, you can't really exceed expectations when you're already at the top. So I think right now it's something that we're building on as a team and they're buying into and we go out expecting to win every single game, but we know every single game on the schedule will be a challenge and we're going to have to bring our, our best basketball and learn and, and get better every day. And obviously with that scenario that you painted about being on top, you're going to have a lot of critics, but is there any tougher critic of you than you? That's the thing. Like no one can beat their, themselves up more than me. And you know, there, we go into the wee hours, burning that midnight oil, watching game film, even on a win, because um, I probably am my toughest critic. And it, you know, there's, there's going to be noise. There's probably going to be a lot of great noise, a, a lot of noise. Well, shoulda, coulda, woulda, or a lot of noise. Well, what if they did that? Well, I'm already thinking those scenarios through in my mind. And so um, that's something that's just how I'm built a little bit is I, I'm a perfectionist, which can be a blessing and a curse, <laughs> but um, you know, we're going to go in there together and, and get it done. I've got an amazing staff that I can lean on that I really, really trust. And they take a lot of that burden and pressure as well. So 
Um, but we strive for greatness. And I think, again, that's a model for life that we want to keep teach our kids. Like, you put in the work, you'll get a, a great result. And so um, if, they can, if they can take that and work hard every day, that's all I can ask. I just, I just want effort and energy and, and hard work. And at the end of the day, if they give me that, it's great. So far, so good. And now we're right back to striving for greatness back on the floor. Molly Miller, thanks so much for taking the time. She's got to get back on the sidelines, and we got to get back up in the broadcast booth because the second half is on the other side of this break. You got Loyola Marymount, and you got your lopes right here at GCU Arena and right here on GCU TV. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. With Cal Borg, Jim Howe back here, high above the court side at GCU Arena. And a good first 20 minutes of basketball as the Lopes are able to hang on. They go nearly the last three minutes without a point. And a nine-point lead becomes two at 35-33. to 33. This is game three of a four-game homestand to begin the season. And saying that, it's time to take a look at the upcoming schedule. It's brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. Kyle? Well, Wednesday night, 6 p.m., right back here at the GCU Arena, the women's basketball team takes on the Lumberjacks of NAU, who are in action right now, leading their Big Sky first conference game opponent, Eastern Washington, at the half by six. And then men's basketball returns to the arena Friday night, as they were supposed to play tonight, like we mentioned earlier, but Prairie View A&M in COVID protocol, so no replacement game for the Lopes for tonight. But Nevada comes to town in a good tune-up for the men before the 13th when ASU comes down from about 15 minutes or so away in Tempe here to the GCU Arena. And then the women's basketball team will head on the road Saturday the 12th at 2 o'clock to take on Southern Utah. They'll play a pair of road games, and uh, Kyle even said to me before the break that Eastern Washington playing NAU now, Eastern Washington will not only host NAU today, they will host GCU a week from Monday. So we'll obviously keep you abreast, and you can also tune in to GCULopes.com, as well as the Twitter and Instagram pages that are being manned as we speak by Cheyenne Rose and Montana Lambden for the women's basketball team. That's at GCU underscore WBB. They've got scores, highlights, and just about anything you'd ever want to know about the GCU women's basketball team. Kyle, I think the main thing that Molly Miller wants to know about this team is okay you're not shooting the ball well okay you're not really able to get those transition buckets like you thought they would what are you going to do about it well absolutely not shooting the ball very well at all just oh, oh, uh, under 30 or over 30 percent rather 34 percent for the game and this is a team that's been averaging about 85, 86 points a game through the first two, and you're at 35 at the half. So this is this might turn into a can you grind it out and play solid defense, and when you get a shot, take it, have some confidence, and if it doesn't go in, shake it off, hit the next one. There also seems to be a little bit of an extra layer of that defense because even when the transition is something that or the pressure defense that the Lions are able to break getting into the front court, that the Lopes have been kind of employing that sneak around from behind, double team, weak side help. Nobody knows about it, so let's just go ahead and force a turnover that way. It's been very effective. Absolutely. We talked about that earlier as well, right? When you think that you've beaten the press on the corner and you get the ball across half court, well, here comes Kennedy Shorts, Katie Scott, Van Lavares from behind to poke the ball loose and cause you to panic a little bit because you don't know where the pressure exactly is going to come from. But on the flip side of that, uh, Loyola Marymount in the half court has switched from that 2-3 to a flying around 1-3-1 trying to trap in the corners. 
and it's thrown Pierre off just a little bit at the start of that first quarter as they, the Lopes have been able to adjust and move the ball quickly, get open looks, and when they miss it, they get offensive rebounds or at least are getting hands on the basketball. Lopes have been able to get three-point shots to fall, but not two-point shots from the perimeter. We're going to see if they're going to be able to change that. Waning moments of halftime here at GC Arena. We're going to come back with your Copper State Credit Union halftime stats on the other side of this break. It's your Lopes 35, Loyola Marymount University 33, second half upcoming right here on GCU TV. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Teams heading back to their respective benches for their final instructions before the second half. And before we get to the second half, why don't we take a look at the Copper State halftime stats. They're brought to you by Copper State Credit Union, the way insurance should be. Kyle? Well, they're being out-rebounded 25-21 are the Lopes, and the shooting percentages is probably what I would put a big circle around if I had one of those yellow markers, <laughs> as you would think this score would be flipped in Loyola Marymount's favor probably by a little bit more than the two-point deficit that they have and you'd love to see the Lopes be able to rebound the basketball it seems like they're getting all of the rebounds but Loyola Marymount has been able to come up with more than the Lopes and the Lopes just being able to get hands on the basketball it seems like so you would think that they would have more rebounds and they're being out rebounded on the season by about one and a half rebounds per game so far so not a huge rebounding differential, but usually the rebounds come uh, late in games is what really separates teams. Well, the Lopes are staying in the ball game because they have 13 more shot attempts than LMU, 41 to 28. They're also, as we mentioned, they're shooting a much better percentage from three-point range. They're six for 16 from behind the arc. LMU conversely, two for eight. And one thing that's also been very steady is six steals in that first half. And also, a nice stat, even though the Lopes have been out-rebounded, you can't fault Kennedy Shorts for that. She has two points, but she has eight boards. That is already a career high for the Long Beach native. Lopes are going to start the second half with the basketball, and the same five on the floor that started the game for that, namely Shorts, Katie Scotts, Taylor Caldwell, Lada Pieta, and Nydeja Nana Jackson. Charity Elliott is countering with Nicole Rodriguez, Natalia Klimek, Megan Mandel, Kari Clark, and Ciara C.C. Ellington. Referees, I think, are trying to get something clarified. And lead official Brenda Pantoja is at the scorer's table. Making sure the arrow's right, I think. I think so. Possession arrow for the moment favors GCU, and at least that's what I have, not that anybody cares. <laughs> but I think Charity Elliott, the nine-year head coach for LMU, was questioning it. And she's not the only one. <laughs> she <laughs> saluted Brenda Petoa and said, okay, I got it, with mask and all, trying to make sure the point was made. And then she looks back at her lead assistant coach, who has a familiar name, Chris Elliott, who is Charity's husband, and he has been an assistant coach at each one of Charity Elliott's four head coaching stops. Lopes with the ball, Scott pass inside, somehow gets to Shorts. She moves in, but that one's swatted away by Ellington. Klimek can't save it from going out of bounds, but a nice defensive play as the Lopes are trying to attack that LMU interior, which has been a tough call so far in the first 20 minutes. Pieta will inbound out front for Katie Scott. They certainly want to get Scott involved. She had only two shot attempts in that first, first half, and the third one is off the mark. Not good. 
So LMU, which has now held GCU scoreless for over three minutes, now with a chance to tie. Nicole Rodriguez has Mandel come out to get the ball, give it to Ellington. Ellington got much more involved in the offense, and she gives it on the pick and roll to Mantell. Mandel has the shot swatted away beautifully by Shorts, but both players coming up a little bit ginger after that exchange, and the foul is going to be called on Shorts. That is three personal fouls on Kennedy Shorts. I didn't necessarily see a lot of contact in that exchange. But Shorts is going to have to head to the bench. Dejectedly so. So Carla Balligate, just 42 seconds into the second half, will check in as Mandel heads to the free throw line. And I think the Lopes were thinking that that shot went in and it was a three-point play attempt. Not so. Mandel will get a second free throw and a chance to tie this ball game for the first time since we were knotted up at seven apiece, which she does. Here's a long pass by Caldwell, and Pieta just can't get there. Lauda and TC conferring on the turnover. And it's a, it was a good look from TC to Piera, just not quite executed perfectly, but you'd like to see the Lopes taking those chances, and I think that's what they uh, really makes them one of the better teams, especially in the Western Athletic Conferences. They're not afraid to make that long pass. If you're open and you're deep, you're probably going to get the ball. Here's Nicole Rodriguez inching out of backcourt. She's covered by Balagay in a switch. So that means Pieta is covering Kari Clark inside. They want to try and work it into her. Can't do it yet. Instead, Rodriguez is alone in the corner and buries the three to give LMU the lead back. Rodriguez with her second tray. She is now in double figures with 11 points. Here is Pieta, split the defense. The running teardrop is not good. And the Lopes continue to be ice cold from the interior perimeter. Rodriguez sets up the play. Her head coach right in front of her on one knee, directing traffic. Coming out to get it stolen away by Carla Balagay. Here she comes, there she goes, to the hoop for two. Great anticipation by the Spaniard. And finally, the Lopes go nearly five minutes without a point. Now it's dribbled off Klimek. Does she save it and avoid the travel? Somehow, yes. Mandel gives it back to her to set up the half-court offense. Clark sets his screen. Double team. They go into the trapping defense. Trying to find room. Slams it off the leg of Scott. Then goes into the backcourt. And they say it was last touched by Klimek. That'll be a back and over. And the Lopes pulling the trigger on the trapping defense at the perfect time. Perfectly executed trap near that midcourt stripe. Just couldn't hang on to it. And the Lopes are going to get this ball back with the chance to take the lead. Pieta in the corner for Jackson. Jackson drive inside, draw the defense, cross court for Caldwell, three-pointer too hard. Coming out of it is CeCe Ellington. Lead pass for Clark, but Caldwell, perfect anticipation, forces another turnover. Caldwell to Jackson, fires a three, that one's short. Long rebound, here's Clark coming down one on three. Caldwell, did she save it? Yes, she did, another beauty on defense by Ty Taylor Caldwell. Pieta quickly into the front court, waits for TC to get back and set. Here's Balagay in for Scott, beautiful move. Scissors pass Mandel, score it, count it, foul. Send her to the free throw line, and this is right around the same time in the win over Ben U that Katie Scott started to get involved, and they want to try and work it into her with the foul on Mandel. Katie Scott, two made baskets, both count the bucket and send her to the free throw line, and this has seemed to be where the Lopes, at the start of the third quarter, they have a new energy. It's like this first quarter for the Lopes. They're ready to go at the start of the second half. Lopes have already forced four turnovers in the first two minutes plus. Scott makes the three-point play and checks out for Ven Lovatis as the Lopes swing back out on top 40-38 to after LMU had used a 21-9 run to take the lead back. Nicole Rodriguez able to beat the press this time. We've already had five lead changes, two of them here in this first three minutes of quarter number three. Mandel way out on the perimeter off for Ellington. 
Ellington scoop it for Klimek. Klimek tried for the behind the back dribble, fumbles, gets it back. Now finds Rodriguez alone in the corner, three-pointer won't go. Mandel sneaks in, and then she crashes to the floor, not expecting the weak side help by Balagay. Mandel still down, and that foul is going to be called on the lopes, although I'm not sure what else Carla Balagay could have done. I don't think there's much Balagay could have done there. She would. I didn't see a foul at all, and Coach Miller is saying she was straight up. I think Mandel just took a really hard fall slip somehow, and we hope that she'll be okay moving forward. She did almost look like she hit, may have hit her head on the floor. I think she did, and they are going to make sure and take a quick look at her. She'll check out. It's a non-shooting foul as Ellington has it. Has it poked away, double teamed again, and this time Pieta going for the steal the second time will get caught. They actually called a foul on the weak side on Ven Lovatis. Already three team fouls. That's been a problem for the Lopes this entire game where LMU has a grand total of seven fouls in the game. The Lopes have been over the team foul limit each of the first two quarters and on their way to it here. Ellington, quick inbound, but the shot won't go. Caldwell able to get the rebound. Lead pass, and that one will luckily for the Lopes go off of Klimek as Vadas saw that she was about to collide with Klimek to get that lead pass. So the Lopes a little bit rough and ragged. Molly Miller wants to get Katie Scott in with a chance to get her in offensively. They have to be careful with Katie as, again, the fouls have mounted. Shorts and Jackson with three each. Scott with two. And Vadas and Balagay off the bench also with two. Scott again. Puts it up. Puts it in. Everybody jumping up and down. Why? Because Katie Scott's got another chance for a three-point play. And I think the second half is Katie Scott time. Here in the third quarter, she went on her run against Benedictine here in the third quarter and early into the fourth and ended with 25. And we'll see what she ends up getting here tonight as she can push the Lopes lead, and she will, to five. Scott cashes in three three-point plays, nine points, and once again, she checks out for Balagay, and apparently Megan Mandel's okay. She get, took that hard shot on the back of her head, but she's back in at center for LMU as they try to break this press. Clark. Crashes in, taking the charge. Jackson in the backcourt. Offensive foul, send it the other way. And that was a risky play on Jackson. She had three personal fouls. Two gradual and methodical on that move. So the outside official, Johnny Mendez, calls the turnover. And LMU will get a break as they have seen a 38-35 lead become a five-point deficit. Eight unanswered by Grand Canyon. Ellington still in backcourt fighting the double team. Gets around Caldwell, and now it's a two on none, and Ellington will get an uncontested lay-in. So a rare defensive breakdown on the interior by the Lopes here in the ballgame, and the 8-0 run is gone. Three-point lead for the Lopes. They have the basketball, and now it's LMU's chance to trap. Caldwell top of the key, back for Jackson. Open look for three in and out. Balagay fighting for the rebound, but she didn't have the position, goes over the top, and that'll cost Carla her third personal foul on the loose ball. Referees were letting them play in the first half, but here through the first four minutes and some change, seven fouls between these two teams, so a little bit tighter of a second half that these players have to adjust to. Caldwell went for the inbound steal, goes out of bounds. LMU will get it back. Lopes are already out of fouls, and we're not even at the midpoint of this third quarter. So it's Kari Clark, mask and all, looking to inbound again. Gets it for Klimek. Klimek gets to the middle of the floor as it knocked away, gets it back. Now a lob over the top, and again, LMU with numbers. Here's Clark, though, double teamed, out for Ellington. Open look, three-pointer, too hard. Long rebound to the side. Balagay reels it in. Well, the Lopes are definitely throwing it all out in the backcourt, but that's leading to some open looks. On the opposite side. Now a long pass. Ill-advised. Caldwell keeps it alive. Gets it to Vadas. Balagay from 15. No. Rodriguez with the rebound. That shot might be a little bit quicker than Molly Miller would have liked. 
Rodriguez in, puts it up over the top. That's an air ball. Mandel saves, but climbing the ladder on the outlet pass to make the steal. Lada Pieta gets it to Balagay. One bounce, puts it up. No. Jackson able to sneak in to get the offensive rebound. And another shot this time down the floor for GCU. Jackson driving through half the county as it knocked away. Gets it back, fights, puts it up. No. Ellington gets the rebound, and as she swings the elbows, the foul is going to be called on Carla Balagay. Four fouls on Balagay, and everybody wearing purple, including Molly Miller, who has her hands on her hips, wanting to know how that happens. Time out on the floor. 4.55 in this rough and ragged third quarter, and it's GCU 43, LMU 40. Keep it here for more exciting, gritty, Lopes Women's Basketball on GCU TV. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. Are you looking for the right place to help advance your education? GCU has all the right tools and programs to help you find your purpose. For more information on what Grand Canyon University has to offer or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Well, Kyle Borg, Molly Miller spent an awful lot of that time out talking to the refereeing crew and trying to point out that it looked like that was a clear elbow into the chops of Carla Balagay. And normally when that happens, that's not a defensive foul. That's flagrant the other way. Yeah, Yeah. I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Miller was trying to point out to this officiating crew. But now with the five fouls for the next four minutes, 55 seconds, LMU is going to shoot two free throws the rest of this quarter. So far, the Lions have been taking advantage of it as Ellington makes the first free throw. They are now 8 for 11 from the charity stripe. Ellington now 2 of 3 and make it 2 of 4, but Mandel at 6 foot 4 able to go over the top and get the offensive board, and LMU with a fresh shot clock and a chance to tie again. Rodriguez dribbling out front, goes to the left side with the dribble, picked up by Vadas in a switch. Here's Mandel for Klimek. They've cleared out the lane. Klimek behind the back dribble, but she's double teamed. Gets it for Clark. Two on the shot clock, puts it up from 14. Off balance, no. Mandel, all six foot four of her, able to grab the offensive board, follows and scores. We're tied at 43. And that's exactly the advantage that this Lions team has over the Lopes is the height. Vadas, baseline jumper, rim around, won't go. Scott able to get the ground, put it up and in. Katie Scott with eight of the ten points the Lopes have in this quarter, and now Clark throws it away. Vadas actually saved it from going out of bounds, and she didn't need to because the Lopes, I don't think, had deflected it. And that's what Taylor Caldwell saying to her right now on the floor is that ball was going out of bounds. That was ours. Well, obviously, you can't fault Vadas for the hustle award, but the Lions will get a gift, and Klimek will inbound it just to their side of midcourt. Klimek looking, waiting, gets it for Ellington. Ellington drives the baseline. She'll put it up, won't go. Wave it off. Offensive foul. Finally, the Lopes able to kind of get a call to go their way, and Vadas comes up wincing, but she did a good job to take the charge and force personal foul number two on Ellington. You know, I'm sitting up here saying that was a charge and thinking about it. She might have been sliding underneath, but the Lopes will take the second charge of the game for them. And nonetheless, it waves off what could have been a tying basket, and the Lopes can add on to their lead. Lopes could use a hoop here. 
They came out like a house on fire in the first three, four minutes offensively, but they've been stagnant here. Scott for three, won't go. Battling for the rebound. Caldwell loses the fight to Clark, and then Taylor Caldwell ties her up, and the possession arrow sends it the other way. But wow, what hustle points TC has. And you know what, the Lopes, they might not grab a ton of rebounds, but man, when you grab the rebound, as soon as you bring that ball down, the Lopes guards and even the bigs are right there to get their hands on it and force a ton of jump balls so far here this today. Clark, baseball pass, might have thrown it right to Vadas. Easy steal for Venla. She'll bring it back up court. Lopes have numbers for the moment. Open look, Tiana Brown, three-pointer no. Vadas, beautiful back tap, gets it for Balagay. Lopes have it again. Fresh shot clock, three and a half left to go, third quarter. Lopes battling offensive woes, but still staying in it. That shot not good. Another back tap by Vadas. Now Pieta tries to outlet it. Klimek goes to the floor, makes the steal. Here's Clark in the front court to Rodriguez as the Lopes scramble back defensively. This is the way LMU was able to battle back in the second half in their home opener Thursday against Cal Irvine. Pass off the hands of Clark, gets it back, somehow gets right around Caldwell and puts it up and in to tie it at 45. And Clemex a little uh, limpy right now. I think she might have rolled her ankle on that last attempt to get that steal, so the Lopes should try and look to attack on her side of the floor. Here's Brown, fakes the pass inside, give it to Pieta. Pieta start to drive. Throws it cross court. Brown will fire another three. That one won't go. There's Vadas again, racking up the rebounds here in this second half. Pieta with a fresh shot clock. Holds the ball for Caldwell. Back to Pieta. She'll fire a three. That one's short. Again, stone cold from behind the arc. Another steal. It's Tiana Brown at midcourt. Four on one. Beautiful stutter step driving around Mandel. Tiana Brown will lay it in. And Charity Elliott has seen enough of the turnovers at midcourt. Timeout Lions, 2.15 left to go third quarter. Oh, we got a barn burner here. We'll keep it here. It's a 30-second timeout as the Lopes with that beautiful play to start and finish it by Tiana Brown, holding on to a two-point lead. The problem with it, though, is as we've seen, Kyle, they have open looks, but LMU is now starting to even sag defensively. They're willing to give them open looks on the perimeter if they can get something on the interior. Well, the Lopes unable to hit a three so far in this third quarter, and LM LMU packing it in defensively in that zone, but still looking to trap every so often. And like you mentioned, Laura Piera, Stone cold right now from the field, but you know, you'd love to see her continue, keep driving, get that floater going, pull up, jump shot. Maybe if she can get to the line one time, that gets her going. But Laura Pierre can do so many other things defensively and getting the offense rolling. And Tiana Brown has come alive here in this third quarter. She's got eight for the game. You got four lopes right now on the floor with six, eight, eight, and 10 points. And then Laura Pierre is out there with none right now. But this lopes team got to look to pour it on here as we close with the final 215 and this was kind of the game the Lopes were expecting from Loyola Marymount. They knew that Loyola Marymount, I mean, they won ugly against Cal Irvine, no doubt about it. They were down 10, they were really struggling from the field and they were able to use some defensive plays and some work inside to be able to turn that into a 66-56 victory over the Anteaters. This has been much the same way, but the Lopes like to get down and dirty and play that type of game. That's why the Lopes are shooting only 31% from the field, but they have 24. 24 more shot attempts than the Lions. They also have forced seven tur or eight turnovers in this third quarter alone. They now have 11 steals, and the Lopes are doing this despite the fact, as you mentioned, Kyle, they are 0 for 7 from three-point range in this first eight minutes of the third quarter. And you know what? 21 turnovers for the game. We could be on our way to maybe 29, maybe 30. Who knows by the end of this one? But CeCe Ellington, she has eight turnovers by herself of that 21 and that's what this Lopes team does you don't have to win pretty every game it doesn't have to look good on the floor grind it out force turnovers frustrate the other team and 
that's what they've done. And the Lopes can, you know, they're sensing blood in the water here in the third quarter. Just LMU is doing a really good job of hanging around. Well, I hate to say it, that was that was a perfect metaphor because I think the extra time out right now is because there is some blood on the floor, literally, and they are trying to make sure that that is sanitized and taken care of. So both teams kind of standing around waiting for play to start, but especially even when it, when there wasn't a COVID protocol, you had to make sure anytime there was blood on an arm or on a jersey or on the floor that you had to take full procedures to make sure that was taken care of. Now even more so with the pandemic. Again, 2.15 left. Lopes holding on to a two-point lead, trying to stay perfect, trying to go 3-0 and before NAU comes to town by making the trip down Interstate 17. Again, that's the Lopes' next game to close out the homestand. And it happens this Wednesday night at 6. And if you can't be among the select few that is in the crowd, well, you can join us in the crowd starting at 5.55 Wednesday night right here on GCU TV. Okay, good to go. Nicole Rodriguez gets the inbounds pass. And LMU comes down with a chance to tie again as the Lopes looking to employ that trapping defense, just waiting for the right time. Haley Herdman is in there being bothered by Pieta. Stop the dribble. Clark comes out to get it. And now a whistle to stop play. And another hand check foul. This one called out front on Lada Pieta. And remember, the Lopes are over the team foul limit. So it's free throw time for Haley Herdman. I'm not sure there was a hand check foul at the top there, but I think it's not so much for Coach Miller that her team is fouling. I think it's the. Um, the ticky-tack fouls that are being called, you know, 30-plus feet from the basket that really put a damper on what you're trying to do defensively. But I think one of the things that Molly Miller immediately did was she looked at her point guard and made sure that Lauda didn't get a look of frustration and just said, hey, you're doing what you're supposed to do. I'm not telling you to stop doing that. Right, and I don't think she's ever going to tell her team to stop pressuring at any point. You just, you just hope that, you know, later in the season, these fouls aren't what puts a damper on what you're doing and the runs that you're on. Herdman makes one, misses one, so the lead is one for the Lopes. Brown fake the three, drive around Rodriguez, drive underneath, draw the defense. Out front is Caldwell. She'll square, she'll fire. Three-pointer in and out, but Brown sneaks in to get the offensive board. Fresh shot clock for GCU with a minute 40 left. Brown fake the three, drive in. Throw it in the corner. There's Vadas for 15. That one won't go. Rebound scramble. Pieta kept it alive for Vadas, but her shot won't go right underneath. Trickles out of bounds. Rodriguez let it go. And this time the Lopes will get the break. They're get, they will get the ball back. And it looked like Lada took a shot on the side of the head by an errant elbow that time. She was a little bit slow to get out of the fray. Now she'll get the ball on the side. Lob inside for Scott. Scott, draw the double team. Out for Vadas. Open for three, won't go. Rebound scramble, comes out front. Herdman's got it. Lopes get back defensively. So Nicole Rodriguez will slow it up and go into the half court. Nearing the one minute mark of this back and forth third quarter. Hope you're enjoying it right here on GCU TV. Clark gets the ball as Vadas slips down. Now it's Herdman. Herdman pass, intercepted beautifully by Caldwell. Uncontested layup on the other end. Taylor has been working for those all day. And that's Taylor Caldwell's first basket here in the third quarter, and she's leading the Lopes right now with 12 points. 49-46, this time Ellington full head of steam out of backcourt. They give it to the trailer. Rodriguez took about five steps before she put the three up. Doesn't go, and the rebound scramble off the hands of Clark out of bounds, and on the floor celebrating that defensive end, defensive gem again. Guess who? Taylor Caldwell. And more great defense from Taylor Caldwell. Back-to-back -back possessions for her. I thought the referees would call a foul on that as Caldwell got a little forearm shove to the ground. So the Lopes have the ball, and Caldwell takes one of the rare opportunities to walk it out of backcourt. There is about six seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock, so let's see how much the Lopes want to use. Caldwell covered by Klimek outside the arc. Out to Scott. Wide open look for three! That couldn't have come at a better time! 15 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and now a stop and play, another bumping foul way out front. This time it's personal foul number three on Vadas. Lions back to the line. Katie Scott so far on the night, five of 10 with 14 points in this third quarter has been Katie Scott's scoring quarter as it has proven 
the last couple of games for her and a nice wide open look from three and she stepped right up and she drained it. So Rodriguez to the line. She's three for three from there, but all of those coming in the first 10 minutes of play. First free throw here is good. She can try and make it a four point game and Molly Miller yelling out instructions from the opposite side of the floor as the Lopes try to box out and the shot clock off. Both free throws good. Four point game, Pieta right down the middle. Walks across the logo, give it to the trailer, Scott. Scott will drive, put up the shot. That one's blocked by Megan Mandel. Three seconds to go. Pieta going for the steal. Instead, it's Klimek, and that one from the other side of midcourt hit the back of the iron and almost dropped through. We are down three. We've got one quarter to go. We hope you will stick around. Here's your score after three quarters at GCU Arena. It's Grand Canyon University 52, Loyola Marymount University 48, right here on GCU TV. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like really unhappy because the internet keeps using not so amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights mountain dew presents the joel mb deserves better reactions gift collection now i'm so happy When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to get... Fourth quarter underway. It's a four-point game. Taylor Caldwell keeps on moving in, puts it up high off the glass, won't go. Rebound scramble. Kiara Clark wins the battle for LMU. That has been a tight battle all game as the rebound battle for the moment is in the form of a 39-36 edge for LMU. And now, I don't know if they called a foul. I don't think they did. They're just going to give the ball to the Lions in the backcourt. It must have gone out of bounds. Here's Ellington. Lead pass for Rodriguez. Caldwell is back, so Rodriguez will pull it out and call out a set play. First offensive possession, and now Pieta goes down. No harm, no foul. Give it in the corner. Klimek drive around the defender. Baseline jumper won't go. Mandel mistimed her jump, and Caldwell comes away with a rebound. Lopes with a lineup of Tiana Brown, Carla Balagay, Katie Scott, Lada Pieta, and Taylor Caldwell. Caldwell thought about the three, instead gives it inside for Scott. Throw it in the corner. Brown drive around the defender, open look, too hard from about 12 feet. And those have been the mid-range shots for the Lopes that fell in the first two games but have not fallen all day today. Klimek thought about the three, passes it up. Again, Ellington will go into the half-court set. Around a Clark screen. Keeps coming. Fall away jumper from 10. No. Rebound. Nothing but white jerseys underneath to take it away from Clark. Scott comes down with the board. Caldwell being methodical coming out of backcourt. Right now they have Caldwell running the point. And that pass intended inside for Scott, but bumping her off the block to pick up the foul is Megan Mandel. That's one of the few times, Kyle, that they have called that on LMU on the interior. Yeah, and that, that's a great call by the official. Pieta for three! She needed that one. That's her first scoring of the ball game, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Now, Kari Clark went up to get the pass. Johnny Mendez, who was standing next to LMU head coach Charity Elliott, called a timeout, and at first it looked like he was going to call a foul. We're going to keep it here. This refereeing crew has 
made a lot of calls, sometimes a little inconsistent with the calls that they have made. And because of that, it seems like this game has gotten more physical as the game has gone by. Well, right, you let them, you let them play in the first half, you know, down low especially. And now here in the second half, you go in the locker room, you say, hey, let's tighten up a little bit. Well, these teams haven't quite adjusted to that just yet. And that last one you saw on Katie Scott, that little undercut as the entry pass came in, that's a call that should, you know, that's easy and all day long. Now, one of the things, Kyle, as we kind of look towards the remaining 828, is one of your three keys to the game was the numbers game. Jarity Elliott has 10 players at least dressed for the game. She has only used six. The question becomes, will fatigue become a factor down the stretch for this team from Los Angeles? Well, you would certainly think it would with the pressure that the Lopes have put on trying to speed you up. But the Lopes have a couple players, you know, nearing the 20 minute mark and even over. Caldwell at 28 right now on the floor, Pierre at 26. And, you know, these are minutes that these two players are used to playing regardless. So they're not too, you know, gassed. But Taylor Caldwell has kind of looked, she hasn't sat down for quite some time. So you would think here for at least a minute or two at some point near the end, depending on how close this one stays. Taylor Caldwell would probably exit for at least a few minutes. Now the Lions have used six, the Lopes have used nine, but there's kind of an asterisk for that because Tavia Rowell has not played in this second half, played very sparingly in that first half. So therefore, in for all practical purposes, the Lopes have only used eight, and we still have not seen Tiara Brown, who has been a game time decision the last two games with a hamstring. Here's Caldwell out front. Ellington able to battle back to get it. No back and over this time. Rodriguez brings it into the front court and the Lopes scramble back defensively. Shot clock at 10. Ellington drive on Pieta. Keeps coming. Falls into Caldwell and they don't call an offensive foul. They call a travel, which was the right call because Caldwell was trying to do the flop. Right. Didn't really make contact, but Ellington trying to sidestep her had to pick up the pivot foot. Yeah, Tara Caldwell thought about taking it and decided that she was going to fall just a little bit early, but hey, it worked out for the Lopes. <laughs> Instead of a blocking call, you get a travel. It's still turnover number 24 on the side of the ledger for the Lions. Conversely, the Lopes just have nine, but make it 10. Clark out front. The steal, the wheel, and the deal. She puts it up and in. Clark has had a couple of those from the, big, from the center position, and she's now in double figures with a dozen. 55-50, Lopes have to keep the foot on the gas offensively, even though their shots have been cold from the outside. Jackson in the corner, Vadas out front. Open look, Caldwell for three, in and out. Rebound scramble, Ellington's got it. Ciara wants to run, Vadas staying with her. She'll spin, stop, throws it for Mandel to Clark, alone, baseline, in and out. And a beautiful box out by Taylor Caldwell, who took it away from the much taller Megan Mandel. Jackson, will she or won't she? Three-pointer, no. Long rebound, here's Ellington. But the Lopes are back defensively. And I think CeCe also, by a little bit of fatigue, just said, hey, let's slow it down for a moment. Well, she's got 32 minutes under her belt so far. And you could tell right there that she did not want to push the pace and try and get a quick score. She's going to let her team set something up. Mandel springs free, but crashes into Lada Pieta, and Pieta took the full brunt of that. That will be a charge on Mandel, a risky play by Pieta, and Lada is very slow to get up. Yeah, rubbing the back of her head. She might have hit it on the floor after taking that charge, and you know what? Laura Piera, over the first two games and in this one, she has taken a ton of hits. She just, she has just keeps going. It doesn't seem to really affect her at all, but you might see that late in the season that start to affect Piera. Charity Elliott seeing that her lead guard, CeCe Ellington, is gassed, gets her out of there. Haley Herdman now covering Pieta out by the midcourt stripe. Lauda, stop the dribble, off for Vadas. Back for Pieta, draw the defense, get up in the air with nowhere to go, give it to Scott. Scott will keep driving, and Mandel got a piece of it. All six foot four of her, and she needed all of it to be able to extend the arms to block that one out of bounds. That's been a battle each time that we've seen that happen, but it hasn't happened nearly as often as I think these two teams thought it would. Pieta on the drive, lob it for Vadas. Open look, three pointer, no. Rebound tipped around. This time it's Klimek coming out of the pack with it. 
Natalia leaves Jackson in her wake as she crosses the midcourt line. Charity Elliott screaming out instructions from the bench as the play happens in front of her. And another push foul out front. This one's on Vadas, and that's Venla's fourth. Well, here come Caldwell and Shorts. Now, Shorts has to be careful along with Nana Jackson. Both of those players have four, and that was Venla's fifth yeah, right there. She has fouled out of the ball game. Venla's final stat line, she had or eight points, including two three balls for this Lope squad and got her hands on a ton of rebounds, only credited with two. But you saw her back in that third quarter for about three possessions in a row, got a couple of tips, and the Lopes ended up with offensive rebounds. Klimek bounces it off the back of Tiana Brown and puts up the shot, but it doesn't go. Lopes get away with one there. Caldwell will bring it out of backcourt, takes it to the right side. Low block pass for Scott, who's being held by Megan Mandel. If that's in the NFL, that could have been 15 yards. <laughs> but instead, it will just be a non-shooting foul, and now Megan Mandel becomes the first Lion to hit the four-foul plateau. And you know that's got to be a concern for Charity Elliott because she's only playing right now with six players. Scott turns around, fires the shot. It's good from about 17 feet. And Katie Scott has been a one-woman wrecking crew offensively in this second half. Lopes again with a backcourt steal. That's turnover number 25 for LMU as we near the midpoint of this rough and ragged fourth quarter. Scott, top of the key for three. That one won't go. That would have brought the house down, but as Klimek gets the rebound, a loose ball foul is called underneath as she pushed Tiana Brown out of the way. And that's Klimek's fourth, but like you said, this place was about to explode if Katie Scott would hit that three. And now the Lopes, fortunate enough, though, to get it back underneath, up by seven, and they have a chance to really stretch this out and end up winning this one by quite a large margin. And for the first time all game, this is the first time that LMU is out of fouls, not the Lopes. Four to one. Non-shooting foul. Scott at the elbow will back it out. Give it to Tiana Brown. They still have eight seconds to get a shot up. Brown sees daylight. Kick in the corner. Open look. Caldwell for three! Taylor Caldwell, third tray of the night, and it's a 10-point bulge for the Lopes. It is their largest lead of the game. Rodriguez, bothered by Brown, keeps the dribble going top of the key. Lions trying not to get rattled as the first double-digit lead of the game happens now. Clark over the top, too hard, intended for Ellington. Now the referees converge. Originally, they said it was Lions basketball. And apparently they are going to keep that call. Didn't look like anybody wearing white touched it. But the Lions are going to get a break as Balagay comes in for Katie Scott. So Rodriguez will inbound it with 10 seconds to get a shot off. Rodriguez looks, waits. Ellington's back in there. They don't see her. Give it to Klimek. Fake the three. Covered by Balagay. Wants to drive on her. And that'll be a traveling violation. And Balagay was actually lobbying for that turnover call and got it, even though Balagay might have gotten away with a little bit of a shove. Yeah, the travel happened a little bit before the drive started, so a little bit of a late call, but Carla 100% right. She did travel. So another turnover, and the Lopes trying to build on this 10-point bulge, which has been hard-earned and then some. They keep it on the perimeter. Brown with 15 on the shot clock. Back for Pieta. Start to drive. Draw the defense. Caldwell to Scott. Alone in the corner for three. Katie Scott, three points at halftime and 16 since then. Klimek drives all the way in. And Scott got both hands on the ball, but they disagree and call the reach-in foul on Scott. That is her third. Yeah, that probably should have been a... A jump ball, good defense from Katie Scott. As she saw her right after the whistle, she she looked at her coach and gave two thumbs up like that was a jump ball. But And they're gonna call that one a shooting foul, not on the pass. Yeah. So Klimek to the line for a pair, and LMU really needs this. This is Klimek, makes the free throw. That's her first scoring since the second quarter. And the next free throw is good. Klimek, one of four that came into the game averaging in double figures. And it's 
Lopes with the lead in the basketball, and now time starting to become a factor. Hook pass for Scott. She springs free, and you can guess the rest. Seven points in the fourth quarter, 21 in the game for the freshman out of Missouri. And now Rodriguez trying to get away from Tiana Brown. It will trickle out of bounds. Unforced error, Lopes basketball. And more great pressure defense from the Lopes on the inbounds pass. And you're starting to see the Lions unravel a little bit. Scott thought about the three, instead drives on Clark. Clark goes down, no harm, no foul, gives it to Pierre, and no. Shorts with the follow, that one won't go. She goes down hard, and a whistle and a foul will send Kennedy to the free throw line. And the bounce is finally starting to go the Lopes' way, but the Lopes are not going to say that's luck. They have definitely gotten hustle points all through the game because of it. And more great hustle from Kennedy Shorts, taking a hard fall, but she popped right back up in the right place at the right time, and that's just what Kennedy Shorts does. Foul called on Klemek, and Klemek is fouled out of the ball game, so each team has one person disqualified as Shorts makes the first. Then Lovatis left the game earlier in the quarter via the five foul variety. Next free throw, not good. Mandel comes down with it, but wait a minute. A holding foul is gonna be called. That's only team foul number three in the Lopes. That was on Caldwell, that's just her second, so no worries for the Lopes on that one, but another foul as the elbow came out into the gut of Taylor Caldwell. Again, full court defensive pressure as Rodriguez gets it in. It's a 14 point Lopes lead, that is their biggest. Rodriguez finally gets it up court. Here's Ellington, drives on Pieta, gets up in the air. They find the open Herdman, but the three pointer's off. Clark, right place, right time, but the first shot is not good, and the second one, that is block shot number three by Lauda Pieta. Now Pieta fumbles, goes out of bounds, last touched by Nicole Rodriguez of the Lions. And Charity Elliott down to her last two timeouts is gonna burn one of them. We will keep it here. It is a 30 second timeout with three minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Lopes have gritted their way to a 14 point lead. But Kyle, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a lopsided game in any way, shape, or form, especially when you take into account the Lopes are still shooting only 32% from the field. And you know what, the 10 threes have a lot to do with that. About half their points now from three pointers, but you can chalk it up to Taylor Caldwell's 10 point first half and Katie, and Katie Scott's almost what, 20-ish point half here mm -hmm. in the second half as those two have probably been the best Lopes players all season long and you get them both going on the same night like you have here so far here this afternoon. It's, it's tough to beat. Well, and it's very rare that you get this, get this kind of a lopsided statistic in shot attempts. LMU has 47 shots from the shot attempts from the field. The Lopes, 81. That is amazing. Lopes with the ball. Here's Scott. Field goal attempt number 82 is perfect. And Katie Scott with 20 points in the second half, 23 for the game, and the Lopes starting to pull away. And this is a tired bunch that you can see wearing powder blue as suddenly those transition opportunities are evaporating quickly. Ellington caught on the baseline, gets it for Herdman. Herdman to Rodriguez, she'll pump up a three, that's too hard, and the Lopes box out for the board with 2.52 left. Now they can afford to use some clock, and Molly Miller says, let's slow it up a little bit. This has been very effective in this fourth quarter, having Taylor Caldwell bring up the ball, and Lauda Pieta on the wing. Pieta with the ball right in front of her head coach, using clock, it's down to 12, and 2.33 left to go in the game. Caldwell hands off for Scott. Let's see what Katie does with five, now with four. Bumped, stop, fumbles, gets it back, force up the shot, won't go, doesn't draw iron. Scott wanted a foul, but the referees are not going to bail her out on that. That'll be a shot clock violation. But the Lopes do get what they want. They used a full 30 seconds. So Rodriguez will inch it out of backcourt, and the Lopes kind of calling off the dogs as far as that full court trap. Rodriguez around the screen, give it to Ellington. Ellington for Mandel. Clark goes inside, they can't find her yet. 
Battling inside with Shorts. Now that pass knocked away. They finally lobbed it in, but coming over at the perfect time was Tiana Brown to knock it away, and another forced error by the Lopes. And with a buck 51 left, it looks like the Lopes are going to go three for three in the Molly Miller era. Pieta waits for his screen. Stop at the free throw line. Here's Scott. Another one. Yes, for three. Katie Scott automatic in the second half and a big smile on the face for the Missouri native. Give her a new career high with 26 now. Here's Clark spinning on Scott. Put it up, won't go. Great defense by Scott to hold her water. And with a minute 20 left, the Lopes can start celebrating and look ahead to Northern Arizona on Wednesday night. Brown waiting for the defense to come out to her as we near the one minute mark. Pieta holding the ball, comes around a short screen. Bounce pass, Caldwell, drive, lob, Scott. Another one, yes, for three, Katie Scott bringing the house down at GCU Arena. And that's exactly what the Lopes knew Katie Scott would give you when they brought her in after Coach Miller was hired back in April, and she has not disappointed this crowd. Nicole Rodriguez gets it into the front court. Suddenly it's all academic as the Lopes have used this fourth quarter to tuck this one away in their wallets. Here's a lob inside. Mandel will put it up with the left hand and get it. And boy, did they have to work for that one. 74 to 54. And the Lopes are going to be methodical. And Molly Miller will call a timeout. She just wants to get some reserves in. Tavia Rowell, Nana Jackson, and even Cameron Here Flemings. Here comes the walk on. Cameron Flemings, the walk on who just got cleared a couple of weeks ago will make her first appearance as a lope, the 5'11 freshman from Dublin, California. So Carla Balagay will inbound it for Pieta. Pieta and Jackson, the only starters still left for this final 34 seconds. And Lauda needs to hurry to get it across that midcourt line and does with about a half second to spare. Now they'll just run it down. The Lions are going to fall to 1-2 and 0-2 and and on the road. And the Lopes will stay perfect 3-0 and here at home. Shot clock at 6. Lopes in no hurry. Jackson will drive. Kick it for Rowell. Rowell with 2, with 1. Puts it up and puts it in. That's Tavia's first scoring since game 1. And the final 6 seconds will elapse as the Lions will concede, but boy, did they give the Lopes a battle. But the fourth quarter was the difference as the Lopes outscore LMU in that final 10 minutes by a whopping 24 to six margin. And they win it going away 76 to 54, but Kyle Borg, this was anything but a blowout. Absolutely, you, st- you look at the score and you go, oh, 22, the Lopes cruise. No, they battled for three and a half quarters of play, and they grinded this win out. And you know what? That's exactly what Coach Miller wanted. Show me what you can do in games that are tough, where the calls aren't going your way, the shots aren't always going to fall. But did the Lopes prove Coach Miller to prove to Coach Miller that they can win in a blowout, in a close one, even in the middle? through these first three games. The Lopes wind up shooting 35% from the field, but the big stat about that is they had 35 more shot attempts than LMU, 85 to 50, and the Lopes 12 for 35 from three-point range. The Lions struggling from the field behind the arc at three of 16, and they tie. You you were hoping for it, Kyle. I know you were hoping for a new record, but it didn't quite happen. They tie the NCAA D1 era for most turnovers forced in a game as the Lopes for the second straight night wind up with 28 turnovers. They only turned the ball over 11 themselves, and they had 14 steals in the effort. Another yeoman battle defensively by this young-look Lopes squad. And another, it's just going to be great defense all season long. We're probably we're going to talk about it all season long, but those 28 turnovers, they were all well-timed turnovers, especially in this second half for the Lopes team. And you got to give credit to Katie Scott and Taylor Caldwell, the only Lopes that scored in double figures. 
And you know what? Every Lope that got in the game today, except for Cameron Fleming's, scored at least two points. Yeah, and they and they all had to do their yeoman work on the defensive side. So that brings us to our player of the game. And I mean, you obviously have to give a lot of credit to just about everybody who was wearing purple and white. And you also got to give credit to Kennedy Shorts. 11 rebounds to lead the way. That is a new career high. Shatters her old career high of five points. Taylor Caldwell was so consistent all game long, she winds up with 15 points. But who you got to give the player of the game to, Kyle? Uh, it's got to be Katie Scott. She gave you 29 points and none more timely than, what did she have at the half? Three? Three. So 26 points second half for Katie Scott. But you know what? Honorable mention Taylor Caldwell, 15 points, six rebounds, and seven assists. She was on triple double watch for most of this second half. And like you mentioned, Kennedy Short's 11 rebounds. She was big even when she was playing with the four fouls. She played smart. She was able to do what she had to do. And Laura Piera as well, only the one basket, but orchestrated this Lopes offense and defense very well. So Katie Scott, 11 of 18 from the field, four of six from three-point range. She made all three of her free throw attempts, 29 points to go along with five rebounds. But as you mentioned, that stat line for Taylor Caldwell, I mean, and, and there was one part even left out, 15 points, six boards, seven assists, seven steals. That is just unheard of. And she really, you could tell that after about the first quarter, she was very relaxed. She was very methodical. And I think as we go back to your three in three keys to the game, Kyle, we talked about avoid the hyped. Well, there was a lot of back and forth jitters that went on in that first half. But Taylor Caldwell really seemed to be a calming influence at the times Molly Miller demanded it of her team. Well, absolutely. Taylor Caldwell, for her, I think it's about seeing that first one go in. And as soon as that first one goes in, I'm good. Let's play basketball. I'll be here to back up Laura Pierre when you need me for a change of pace. And even she has looked really good in these first three games coming off the ACL injury a year ago. So we, this is really the first time that we get to see Caldwell and Piera play uh, a ton of minutes together on the floor. You didn't see it two years ago when they were both freshmen uh, for this Lopes team. And you know, a Lopes team that was nobody really knew where to pick them to finish in the uh, preseason polls for the coaches and the media for the Western Athletic Conference. And I would love to see a midseason poll at the end of December <laughs> going into whack play because they were picked to finish third and sixth after finishing second last year. I mean, this is anybody's conference every year. There's no one team like kind of on the men's side that has dominated the past six or seven years. The Lopes have a great chance of being you know, getting their first regular season title, making a run to the title game, and who knows, maybe even winning that WAC championship game, which is the goal, of course, for this Lopes team and making their first tournament appearance. But we can't get ahead of ourselves. We're still a month and a day away from conference play beginning right here at GCU Arena against one of the newcomers of the WAC conference, that being Tarleton State. But of course, three down, one to go on this season opening homestand. And we want to remind you that we will wind up that four game homestand right back here this Wednesday night. That's December the 9th, GC Arena. The Lumberjacks of NAU making the trip down I-17 to Phoenix to battle your lopes, a 6 p.m. tip off. If you can't be among the select few who can be part of the festivities here, well, you can be part of the festivities right here on GCU TV. We'll start it off with the pregame show at 5.55 and we will start with tip off at 6 p.m. We want to thank our great crew who has brought you a whole bunch of sight and sounds today. On cameras, Dominic Hinton and Andrew Rangel, our producer in our ears, and boy, did she have a lot to do. Marley Thompson, Hanku, Fon Hanku Funsale with plenty of graphics, and our director extraordinaire, Robert Purcell. Thank you all so much for the job you did. And Kyle Borg, thank you so much. A great job, and we get to do this again in just four days. Looking forward to it. So remember that you can follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to download the Lope Nation app so you can watch all of the live streams from your mobile device, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. So for everybody here, including my partner in crime, Kyle Borg, this is Jim Howe speaking to you from GCU Arena in the heart of Phoenix in the Valley of the Sun, reminding you the final score again and a very misleading final score, the Grand Canyon University Lopes 76 and the Loyola Marymount University Lions 54. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and go Lopes.